Welcome to Life with David. I'm David, and today I want to light my fire. In my Norcold N300 RV refrigerator, that is. And I want to keep the flame going. Unfortunately, the flame keeps going out, which renders the refrigerator inoperable when electricity is unavailable. I want to go boondocking this year, so why don't you join me as I try to get that flame going again? I'd like to spend a moment on safety. There's nothing more important than keeping you and your loved ones safe. Be sure to read, understand, and follow the safety rules for your tools. Using your tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And always use the appropriate eye, hearing, and respiratory personal protective equipment. This time we're working with propane gas, which of course is flammable and can be dangerous. Make sure you maintain good ventilation while you're working, avoid situations that can start a fire, and check for leaks after you're done. If you're following along, you're doing so at your own risk. Follow the manufacturer's safety recommendations, and if you don't feel comfortable doing any of these activities, then don't. Now let's get started. The refrigerator in my travel trailer can operate on either 110 volt AC or propane gas. It seems counterintuitive that you burn gas to keep things cold, but that's what makes the absorption refrigerator so special. The sealed refrigeration system is filled with a pressurized mixture of distilled water, ammonia, hydrogen, and sodium chromate. The heat from the burning propane is used to boil off ammonia from the water where it circulates through a labyrinth of tubes, tanks, and heat exchangers, mixing with hydrogen while both absorbing and releasing heat. I don't have time to cover the full theory in this video, so I'll put a link in the description to a couple videos that explain absorption refrigeration if you're interested. My refrigerator works fine on AC, but I have been having increasing problems keeping the burner lit when it's running on propane. The lighting procedure is to turn the selector switch to the gas, turn the temperature control to 5, press the gas safety valve button, and then click the sparker several times until the meter needle moves into the green region. Then let go of the gas safety valve button and the meter needle should stay in the green. However, as you can see, the needle drops out of the green area, meaning the flame isn't staying lit. What's happening? Well, to prevent propane from flowing if the flame goes out, there's a safety interlock which uses a heated thermocouple to hold the gas valve open. When you first ignite the flame, you push the gas safety valve button, which manually opens the gas valve. The flame heats a thermocouple, which generates a small electrical current. This current energizes a small solenoid called an interrupter, which holds the gas valve open as long as enough current flows through it. If the flame goes out, the thermocouple stops producing a current, and the interrupter lets the gas valve close. It appears there is a problem with the interlock system not holding the gas valve open. I'll refer to the Norcold N300 LP Gas Troubleshooting Guide. First, I'll remove the outside grills and open the burner box. By having someone hold the button, I can visually see that the burner is lit and the flame is impinging on the thermocouple. Next is to get to the gas valves and interrupter on top of the unit. That wasn't easy. I removed the door, removed screws that fastened the refrigerator to the cabinet, and freed up some wires and a gas line at the back of the unit. Then I tipped the unit forward just enough so I could get to the gas valve. I didn't record this part because I was having some problems pulling the fridge out and I wanted to keep this a family friendly channel. Since I had cleaned the burner and checked for thermocouple alignment, I jumped into taking voltage measurements. I followed a Norcold troubleshooting guide and service manual I found on the web. I knew the thermocouple was putting out a voltage because the meter was very high in the green area. However, when I checked the voltage to the angle connector on the interrupter, I saw the voltage was high, 30 millivolts, whereas it should have been about 15 millivolts. I 
I put together a very simple schematic so I could understand what the readings were telling me. The hot junction of the type K chromal alumel thermocouple is located in the pilot flame. The cold junction is located at the interrupter. At this point, the positive connection is diverted from the interrupter through the angled blade connector where it is wired to the selector switch. The other side of the switch returns to the straight blade of the interrupter. The electromagnet that holds open the gas safety valve is connected between the straight connector and ground. If either the pilot light goes out or the selector is switched away from gas, the electromagnet is de-energized and the safety valve closed. The thermocouple outputs about 41 microvolts per degree centigrade across the cold junction with no load or about 30 millivolts at operating temperature as demonstrated by this similar thermocouple. When the electromagnet is in the circuit, the voltage across the cold junction should decrease to about 15 millivolts. However, any resistance in the connections or wiring will drop the current below what is needed by the electromagnet. I found this out firsthand when I tried to use test leads to connect an electromagnet to the thermocouple. The resistance of about 1 ohm per test lead was just too much. And in my Norcold, there are several areas where resistances can sneak in, as highlighted here on the schematic. Since the voltage measured at the angle connector was higher than specified, I suspected that there was a faulty downstream connection. The area around the interrupter looked a little tarnished, so I decided to first clean the interrupter connections. I used some Scotch-Brite and fine sandpaper to make them nice and bright. I measured the voltage again, and the voltage at the angle connector dropped to the specified 15 millivolts. I also noticed that the flame meter was now in the middle of the green area and not at the top like before. I released the gas safety valve button and the flame stayed lit. Success! Had I not found the bad connection so quickly, I would have turned my attention to the switch. Here I would have cleaned the switch connections. If that didn't work, I would have sprayed some contact cleaner into the switch and worked it back and forth to clean the internal contacts. Disconnect the wires from the interrupter and check for continuity across the switch with the switch turned to gas. If cleaning the switch didn't solve the problem, I would disconnect the wires from the interrupter again and would check the continuity between the straight connector and the body of the interrupter using a high impedance digital ohm meter. Because the interrupter coil is designed for low voltages and currents, using a lower impedance analog ohm meter could damage the coil. You used to be able to buy an interrupter separately, but now it seems that the entire gas safety valve must be replaced for about $70. What if the voltage across the cold junction was less than specified? After verifying that the hot junction was properly positioned in the flame, I would have cleaned the cold junction and then checked across the thermocouple for the continuity. An open circuit indicates a failed thermocouple, which would require replacement. Use the troubleshooting guides provided by Norcold to help guide you. Thanks for joining me today. We fixed the LP gas interrupter circuit of my Norcold N300 refrigerator. Now I can go boondocking again. I didn't need any parts for my repair, however that isn't always the case. You might need a new thermocouple, wire assembly, switch, or interrupter. The troubleshooting guide and service manual should help you out. If you like this video, or you think someone else might, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. The more likes this video has, the more YouTube will recommend it to others. Also, please leave a comment or suggestion for things to do. I hope to do more of these videos, so please subscribe, and click on the bell for notifications of new videos. Let's get together next time for another day in Life with David. See you soon!